Have you ever wondered how a tiny device can tell how much alcohol is in your system just by analyzing your breath? It almost seems like magic, but it's actually science, and a pretty fascinating one at that. Breathalyzers have been around for decades, helping law enforcement, workplaces, and even individuals monitor blood alcohol content with just a puff of air. But how do they work? And why does breathing into a machine give an accurate reading of what's in your bloodstream? Let's break it down right here on History of Simple Things. To understand how a breathalyzer works, we first need to understand how alcohol travels through your body. When you drink, alcohol doesn't just stay in your stomach. It gets absorbed into your bloodstream, mostly through the small intestine, and then circulates throughout your body. Since blood carries oxygen to your lungs, it also carries alcohol. And because alcohol is volatile, it easily evaporates. It moves from the bloodstream into the air sacs in your lungs, called alveoli. When you exhale, some of that alcohol is released in your breath. This is what a breathalyzer picks up. Now, here's the key. The amount of alcohol in your breath is directly proportional to the amount in your blood. This means that by measuring breath alcohol concentration, we can estimate blood alcohol concentration. Scientists have determined that the ratio of breath alcohol to blood alcohol is roughly 1, 2100. In other words, for every unit of alcohol in your breath, there are about 2,100 units in your blood. This ratio allows breathalyzers to provide an accurate reading without needing a blood sample. There are three main types of breathalyzers, each using different technology to measure alcohol levels, semiconductor sensors, fuel cell sensors, and infrared spectrometry. Semiconductor Sensor Breathalyzers these are the cheapest and most common types often found in personal breath testers. They use a tin oxide semiconductor that reacts with alcohol. When alcohol molecules interact with the sensor, they change its electrical resistance, and the device translates this change into a blood alcohol content reading. While these breathalyzers are affordable, they aren't the most reliable, as they can sometimes be affected by other substances like acetone or cigarette smoke. Fuel cell breathalyzers. These are more advanced and commonly used by law enforcement. A fuel cell breathalyzer works by creating a chemical reaction between alcohol and an electrode. When alcohol in the breath comes into contact with the fuel cell, it gets oxidized, producing an electrical current. The stronger the current, the higher the alcohol concentration. Fuel cell breathalyzers are highly accurate and less likely to be affected by other chemicals, making them a preferred choice for professional use. Infrared Spectrometry Breathalyzers These are the high-tech, heavy-duty machines you'll often see at police stations. Instead of using a chemical reaction, they use infrared light to measure alcohol molecules in the breath. Different molecules absorb different wavelengths of light, and alcohol has a unique absorption pattern. By shining infrared light through a breath sample, the device can determine exactly how much alcohol is present. These breathalyzers are incredibly precise and are often used as evidence in legal cases. So, what actually happens when you blow into a breathalyzer? Let's walk through it step by step. You take a deep breath and blow. The first step is to exhale a steady stream of air into the device. The reason you have to blow hard is to ensure that the breath sample comes from deep in your lungs, where the alcohol concentration is most reflective of your blood alcohol level. The sensor analyzes the alcohol. Depending on the type of breathalyzer, the device either uses a chemical reaction fuel cell or semiconductor, or an infrared light absorption method to measure the amount of alcohol in the sample. The blood alcohol content is calculated. 
The device then applies the breath to blood alcohol ratio, 1 to 2100, to estimate the person's blood alcohol content. If the reading is above the legal limit, typically 0.08% in many countries, it means the person is legally impaired. The result is displayed within seconds. The breathalyzer displays a numerical value indicating the estimated BAC. Some high-end breathalyzers can even store data, print results, or send them to a connected device. While breathalyzers are useful, they aren't perfect. Several factors can influence their accuracy. Mouth alcohol. If someone has recently taken a sip of alcohol, used mouthwash, or eaten certain foods, residual alcohol in the mouth can cause a falsely high reading. Breathing pattern. Holding your breath before blowing can increase alcohol concentration in your breath, while hyperventilating can lower it. Temperature. Breathalyzers are calibrated for normal body temperature. If someone has a fever, their BAC reading might be slightly higher than it actually is. Other chemicals. Some medical conditions like diabetes or ketosis from fasting can produce acetone in the breath, which some breathalyzers might mistake for alcohol. Breathalyzers are an essential tool in preventing drunk driving which is one of the leading causes of traffic accidents worldwide. By providing an easy and quick way to measure alcohol levels, they help law enforcement keep roads safer. Many personal breathalyzers are also available for individuals who want to monitor their own BAC before deciding to drive. In some cases, breathalyzers are used in workplaces especially in industries where safety is critical, like aviation or heavy machinery operation. They're also used in rehabilitation programs, legal cases, and even some smart car systems that prevent intoxicated driving. Breathalyzers may seem like simple devices, but the science behind them is quite sophisticated. By measuring alcohol levels in your breath and using precise calculations, they provide a fast and effective way to estimate back. While not perfect, they play a crucial role in keeping people safe on the roads and in workplaces. So next time you see a breathalyzer in action, whether in a movie or real life, you'll know exactly what's happening inside that little device. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.